Well, I am really excited that you're here for the Content Creation Made Easy podcast this week because I don't know what kind of content you're creating. I don't know what kind of networking events you're going to, but I do know that if you have a messed up message that is unclear or fuzzy, or it takes too long to say, or people don't know what the hell you do when they leave talking to you, then you are gonna gonna wanna stick around today for my guest, Dr. Michelle Mazur. Michelle works with brilliant business owners who love to shake things up, but have trouble talking about it. I mean, there's no, I, I mean, that is this the clearest thing, right? Like, you know, you have some expertise, but it ha- you have so much trouble getting it out of your mouth or your fingers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michelle combines the tools of success- successful social movements with qualitative research skills. She has a PhD, people. We're talking with somebody really serious today. Um, and she helps people craft a powerful, captivating message. And that's why she's here because she has, she's authored three books, Um, She is going to teach us something about the three-word rebellion, which is her way into talking about messaging. And she's been featured in big deal places like Fast Company, Entrepreneur, and Inc. So um, Michelle knows that speaking about what you do in a clear and captivating way is the key to reaching people you can help. And you know that I'm always talking about this, so I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad Michelle's here. Thank you, Michelle. I'm glad you're uh, ready to share some brilliance with us today. Ah, yes, Jen. Let's do this. It's going to be great. (laughs) Why don't you give us a little bit of background? We talked before we were on the air about your very varied past and how you've lived all over the United States. But I'm curious, how did you get into this expertise in communications with your PhD? Well, it actually started in high school when I got obsessed with communication. I had to take this public speaking class. And in high school, I was very shy, very quiet, very Mm -hmm. awkward. Public speaking was terrifying. Plus the boy I liked was in my public speaking class, which was just not great. And the first speech that I ever had to give, like everything was shaking. Like my knees were knocking behind the podium. Like my hands were shaking. My voice was trembling and it sucked. And there was this little voice in my head saying, this is a really important skill. So you should master it. So I got a gentleman's C in public speaking (laughs) because it's like, yeah, you're not very good, but I'm not going to hold that against you. And after that, I decided to, that if I wanted to get good at it, I should just do it competitively. And I joined the speech and debate team because yeah, if you really suck at something, then you should totally do it competitively. (laughs) But that's really where I, you know, honed the skill, spent hours just working on like how do you write a speech how do you get a message across how do you deliver it well and i did speech and debate in college and eventually that led me to like when you're when you're a debate person you're always in the comm department like hanging out with the professors everyone knows you and one of the professors pulled me aside her name's dr pamela cobflesh and she was like I know you don't know me well and we've never had a class together but do you have you thought about doing a master's like what lady you don't know me (laughs) she's like she's like i hear a lot about you and how smart you are and creative and she's like i just think it would be really great for you and that's really that was the nudge to kind of get me into academia and just grow my obsession with communication (laughs) I love, there's so many good nuggets in that little vignette right there, because it's, first of all, if you're not good at something to like naturally, it's so what, right? Like that's a very big thing I see, especially when people are creating content or creating their message. Well, I'm just not good at it, so I won't do it, right? Yeah. And then the other piece is that that mentor who steps in and says, hey, I can see something that you can't quite see in yourself. And let me mm-hmm. nudge you into it. And I think these are all important things that we bring along our journey, especially as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And, you know, I always look back, at, especially at like joining the speech and debate team, because I'm i like, what was I thinking? Like getting up at 6 a.m. to lose thinking? every <laughs> single weekend. But it, it was it was like the one thing where I just I didn't care what other people thought. And although I did want to do well, it was just I just kind of was like, no, I'm here to get better at this skill. And I don't care if I lose every single week. It's fine. Like, I don't care what other people think. What did 17-year-old Michelle think 
was so important about this. Like you weren't good at it for a long time. It took you all this practice. Like what was burning inside of you that makes you keep going? I think part of it was, you know, my mom always, like she always talked about people like John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King. And these men were great orators, gave amazing speeches. And so in my head, I think I connected that ability to communicate with the ability to create change in the world or even in your little part of the world. Yeah. You know, uh, just to pull on that thread a little bit, I wound up leaving, I was teaching, um, college. Basically I was teaching like 13th graders at a, a, a community college and I was teaching writing and I had done it for four years. And at the end of the fourth year, I was still banging my head against the wall at the end of the semester being like, you guys still don't know what a, a thesis statement is. We've been talking about it for four months now and you still don't know about it. Mm-hmm. And it was in that moment that I was like, they don't care about getting their message across. They don't care about communicating to other people and being understood. And it was in that moment that I was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to go figure out how I can do something else in the world because I can't keep trying to convince people that communication is important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and it's interesting to me because I kind of see that parallel now in online business where everybody's like, oh, well, just give me a swipe, give me a template, give me a formula. And they're not thinking about the person on the other end. They're not thinking about how to communicate what makes them unique, what makes them different. It's, I mean, and part of it is because messaging communication is difficult like it's hard and it takes work and people just want that quick fix that fast solution and then when it doesn't work they're like well i followed all the swipe files why didn't it work well it didn't work because it didn't sound like you it sounded like everybody else you don't know how you're different you're you know and uh and and it's like we have to be great communicators in business in order to persuade people to be ready to work with us Yes. And it, I love that you named it. It takes work and it's, Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've been fed a belief that it should be easy. Why is it so hard? You're speaking your mother tongue. Why is this so hard? And oh, also other people have done it and made six figures in six weeks. Like we've been fed all this bullshit about that. It's supposed to be easy, but it, it just isn't easy. I mean, I'm here and you're here to make it easier. So Mm -hmm. yes, let's figure out how to do that. But I'm really glad you've named all of this stuff for us. And I'm let's, let's start talking about messaging specifically. All right. So, um, You are an expert in messaging, but I'm curious, like, what are the jobs that messaging actually does for us? How is it helpful? Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the things I want to dispel right away is there's a lot of misconceptions about what messaging is in the online space. People will say, like, it's your tagline. It's your I help statement. It's your content plan. It's your, uh, yeah, the content plan or your content buckets. That's what your message is. And it's like, yeah, it's that and so much more because messaging is everything your business says, whether that's on a social media post, a podcast interview like this one, in a sales conversation, in your copy, in your emails, to your community, your opt-in, like that is all messaging. It is really this comprehensive system that we use across all aspects of our business in order to be known for our work and to get people wanting to hire us. So it's just not this like one small thing. And if you nail that, you have your messaging. It's like, no, it's very comprehensive. And you have to think about having a consistent message throughout because your message has very important jobs to do. So the three jobs I see messaging doing, number one is capturing attention. And as we know, it's super noisy. We hear thousands of marketing messages a day. So your message's job is to actually help capture attention, make people curious to know more. Um, And that's, and I know we'll talk about the three word rebellion framework, but the three word rebellion framework is really good at capturing attention and making people curious, but also differentiating you from everyone who does what you do. And I always give the example from my industry of like magnetic messaging. Like I see that message all the time from people who do quote unquote do messaging. And there are hundreds of people are like, let's create your magnetic message. And I'm like, 
oh boy, you're all competing for the same little swatch yeah. <laughs> of, of the marketplace versus like carving out your own unique space. So attention, differentiation. And then the second part of this is it creates conversation. So once you get someone's attention, you have to know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Because if like Simon Sinek said, start with why, and but he didn't have his framework that went with it, you'd be like, great, start with why. What's that all about? <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> Yeah, but so we have to know how to create conversations and strategic conversations that actually move people from not knowing us, not knowing if they have the problem we solve to understanding their problem, understanding our solution and then making that sales decision. So it's a very strategic. And then the final job your message does is creating connection, cultivating connection between you and the other person. So this is storytelling, your story, but none, none of that rags to riches stuff. We don't, we don't do that in my world, mm -hmm. but your story, your experience, your client's stories, their experience, other people's stories in the world that support your work can all come in to create that connection and that understanding like, oh yeah, I really, I really get my people. Like yeah. I understand you. So we're talking the messaging, the jobs of messaging are wide and deep. Yes. It's really quite systemic. Yeah. And for me, I really, after you create an offer and you know it sells, your next step should be figuring out like, what is the message to sell this? But we mm -hmm. tend to skip and be like, all right, well, I have this great offer. It sells. So I'm going to do some marketing. But you don't have the message to drive the marketing so that it gets That's results to the offer. So yeah, people yeah, market yeah. for mar I'm sure you see this. People market for marketing's sake. And yeah. it's like, no, you have to be far more strategic. So yeah, it, it is wide and also deep. And then it just, once you figure it out, it makes creating content so much easier because now you're not just creating to create, but you know that this content is leading people to your work. What are some of the mistakes people make when they are trying to create this message? Well, I think mistake number one <laughs> is they don't know who they're talking to. Okay. Um, I, I see this all the time on websites where I land on a website and I'm like, I don't know if you're for me or not. Like you're pushing this solution, but A, I don't know what the problem it solves. And I don't know if it's for a person like me or a business like me. So we, we miss that. Or the other thing I see is that especially for experts, they get really trapped in their expertise. I call this phenomenon like the overlooked expert problem um, because there are so many people who are amazing at what they do, but they are passed over for people who have half the experience, talent, skills, because they can't communicate what it is they do because they're so wrapped up in that solution and being the expert that they meet their people at the level of the expert instead of where people are at. And then the final thing I see is like, honestly, people don't get their ideas out of their head and onto paper where they can actually deal with it. We just spend time in our heads spinning mm -hmm. on our message and we just think, oh, well, I, I shouldn't like really put anything out there until I figure this out. That's not how you figure out a message ever. <laughs> Like you, it has to interact with other people, whether that's like a trusted advisor, uh, you know, someone like me or your business bestie, it just can't stay in your head. We have to get it out. So then we can actually craft and structure a message. You know, as an expert in messaging, do you find that you even operate better when you work outside your, outside of your mouth? Like you work with somebody else? Like, do you find you, even you get more clarity when you're not operating in a silo? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's interesting because like I'm always testing like different messaging angles. Because <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, 
enough. It's it's fun. And so like, for instance, that idea of the overlooked expert that came out of a conversation, I believe that I had with my podcast team because I was listening to this one podcast about it's called Against the Rules. And it's the season is all about experts and how experts are unknown. And the person who solves our problem aren't, isn't the person we actually see. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, this is what I'm seeing. So if I didn't have like that podcast, the conversation with my podcasting team that helps me with strategy, I don't think I would have been able to articulate it. Yeah. I feel like people think for people who messaging is easy for like you and me, like I've, it's fun to f- futz around with messaging mm-hmm. and that for us, it just comes naturally, but every single person works at their messaging. Yeah. And for me, it's like what I help my clients do. It's like, let's lay that foundation down so we know what your key messages might be. And then let's start testing some of those messages and seeing how how it works for you. Because, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I feel like everyone even because I hear this, I work with a lot of people who do branding, copywriting, marketing, messaging themselves. And they're like, I can't do this for myself. I need someone to do it for me yeah, um, or do it with me. And I'm like, yep, it's hard. It's really hard to see what makes you brilliant sometimes. We we lose sight of that. It really is. So let's talk about how you help people with your three word rebellion. This is now this Michelle is how I first met you through, we, we just met today, but I'm, I've known about you for a while because I heard you on a summit talking about your three word rebellion and it really stuck with me. And so I'm so excited for people to hear this, please share. <laughs> what do we need to know about the three word rebellion? Yeah. So the three word rebellion is a message that encapsulates the change that you, that you want to create for your clients. It is a message that is sticky, that is easy for other people to spread. And most importantly, it's a message that's not about you. It's really about the people you want to reach. So some famous examples of three word rebellions that inspired this framework. So Simon Sinek's start with why, which was so brilliant because it makes you go like, oh, I should start with my why. Cool. Wait, what, what is my why? I have no idea. So I better go, (laughs) yeah, like I better go buy his book or watch his TEDx talk or Mel Robbins in the five second rule. When I first found that, I was like, what is that? Should I be following that? I don't know. I better go watch the TED talk, watch, you know, buy her book, figure out like if this is a useful concept. And for me, I was like the five second rule was always so brilliant because it's like, oh, you count backwards from five and you take an action. It gets you out of procrastination. Cool. Like so simple. And yet she's made, she sold millions of books, um, self-published no less, Mm -hmm. um, and has this amazing speaking career, but it's, yeah. So that message, it's the thing that draws us initially in. And so if we can distill what our work is all about in two to five words, because you know it doesn't have to necessarily be three, but it needs to be very short and words that are a phrase. Because I hear people will tell me, it'd be like, oh, my three word rebellion is purple monkey dishwasher. And I'm like, yeah, no, it, it, it's those are three random words that only make sense to you. Like no one's ever gonna remember those. <laughs> So we have, when we have this message, then it's like, okay, this is what I'm leading with. This is the message I want to be known for. Mm -hmm. And then we can build the whole messaging ecosystem around that so that we're actually leading people to our work. So how do we get started with our own three word rebellion? Because I don't imagine this is easy to do for people. No, but it's fun. The first part is super fun. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, given how, so sometimes when I'm talking to somebody and they're rambling on and they have this very long word filled with jargon or the word, you know, transformation or empowerment or whatever, that that took them so long to come up with this super long message. 
how do we get down to this laser focused three word to five word message? Yeah. So the first thing we have to do is going back to let's get your ideas out of your head and onto paper. So I use a process called free writing and free writing is like you just let it all out, right? You just write. You don't censor yourself. You don't worry about grammar or spelling. Mm -hmm. You don't do any self editing. You just go through and you write. And so I created questions based on social movements that help people kind of tap in to number one like what are you rebelling against like what in your industry just kind of ticks you off and then on the other side of that it's like what's the change you're trying to create and i think some people really get stuck with that second part and like well well, how am I going to make this happen and it's like no it's not about the how it's about the what if because hmm. The purpose of this is to like gather your people together to create this change, to have this impact. Mm -hmm. So that for me, it's just like it's time to be dreamy and not limit yourself by worrying about the how you're going to do something. For most of us, are we already we probably already know our hows. We probably already have our programs. We already probably have ours. Like we just don't know how to talk about it succinctly. Yeah. And I think it's also going that one level deeper because I, you know, I see people get so solution oriented. It's like, this is how I fix things. And it's like, yeah, but what does that actually do for people? Yes. Like, okay. that's great. But what is that kind of change that bigger, like for me, like the three word rebellion, it's about like growing your business into this movement, which is very aspirational, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it is kind of this bigger message, but we get so like, I'm a coach and I coach and that's what I do. And coaching will help your life and you'll live a better life. But we don't we're like, well, how are you gonna live a better life? Like if people actually accepted like your coaching, how do things change? What is that ripple effect? And kind of diving into that because really that's where the transformation and the message lives. Like the rebellion stuff is great. It is your foil. I always help clients come up with a villain that lives outside of their people so they don't feel like they have to blame themselves. <laughs> Mm -hmm. for for the problems they have but then it's like your three-word rebellion is what slays the villain what's your three-word rebellion three-word rebellion <laughs> <laughs> i love being asked that Very question meta. like i am super meta my whole business is meta <laughs> is there anything else people need to know about creating their own three-word rebellion yeah, I think so. You'll get a lot of great writing. And here's the deal. Even if you can't find your three word rebellion right away, you will have content ideas for days to share. Like it could be podcast episodes, blog posts, social media, however you're marketing, you could actually start sharing some of this and seeing how it resonates with people. And that might be a little scary because you're talking about some of the things that tick you off or big picture changes you want to see. Um, but then it's really this process of letting that free writing sit a little bit and then diving back in to start looking for, you know, standout words, standout phrases, great verbs to really start unearthing it because it is this unearthing process. Like, I believe your three word rebellion already exists. It's just buried in a whole bunch of words and we have to pull it out and polish it up and then it's ready for you i love this i my brain is like firing with what mine could be or like do i already have it do i already like use it is it being woven into a whole bunch of things and i imagine are do some people come up with more than one three-word rebellion statement they Yes, I have seen, but I always want people to pick one because you can only be known for one thing. Yeah. Like, and I think that's where entrepreneurs, business owners get themselves in trouble. They're like, I want to be known for this and this. And it's like, no, like your people are always going just to remember one thing because that's what they have the capacity for. Yeah. And if you don't choose, they're going to choose for you. <laughs> right. And it might not be the thing you want to be known for. I know. And then all of a sudden you're like, how am I known for this? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like I have to take control of the message and 
like, yeah, I mean, it's really, for me, it's about this advocacy. It's like, I'm going to advocate for this one message. And it's the thing is, it's like your message will evolve over time. Your three word rebellion is not something that's written on your tombstone. You'll use it for three to five years. And then maybe your business shifts or what you're interested in shifts. And so your message will shift. And then you go back through the process and be like, okay, well, what's the new message for this? When you're thinking about your three word rebellion, it's what am I for Mm -hmm. and what am I against? And really sussing out those things to unearth what you want to be known for. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that is the, the, the raw ingredients of what your three word rebellion is. And then. No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah. And then then there's like, you know, I talk about this in the book, but, you know, there are just different types of three word rebellions, whether it's like that battle cry that starts with a verb. So um, start with why or my client, Carolyn Mays, who's uncaged your epic credential. She writes bios or, you know, we have the naming the change agent. So my three word rebellion is a great like this is like I'm going to get people get clear on their message in three words, <laughs> Mel Robbins, the five second rule. And then there are declarations and mantras, like everything is figure outable for Marie Forleo, or one of my clients has questioned the drink. She works with people who are questioning their relationship with alcohol. Yeah. 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 So oh, that's really fascinating. Mm-hmm. You question the drink. You're just like, I kind of know what that's about now. Like I kind of get who she is and what she's about. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's great because it's like, oh, it, you know, if you don't know her yet, you're like, oh, she's going to help me figure out what my relationship with alcohol is. But even if you do know her, it's a good mantra to take forward, like, as you're navigating the world, like questioning the drink that you're about to have. Tell me, um, you mentioned, this is something you say a lot, that you talk about a category of one and being one of a kind. And um, this is, a, this is a, a mantra of yours. Can you go a little mm-hmm. bit deeper on being in a category of one? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like messaging is a great way to carve out your unique space in the marketplace. I don't want to use the word niche because that always implies other people, but it's like, if you look at the marketplace, so all the content marketing people in the world, like you have to carve out your own unique place. And if you're saying, you know, going back to the magnetic messaging, everybody who's saying magnetic messaging, well, there's a lot of supply for a limited amount of demand, which means you're competing on price, you can't be known, you're saying what everybody else is saying, and there's no real reason to choose you. Whereas if you have that unique one of a kind message, you're creating your own little space in the market. So I think about, you know, three word rebellion or Donald Miller's story brand or Tamsin Webster's red thread method. Each of us has carved out our own unique spot because Tamsin, if you want a red thread, you have to go to her. She's the only game in town. I if you know what want, that means. <laughs> what is I, what is that? It's it's a way to build. It's kind of a way to build an argument for okay. your work, for an idea. So she really, I feel like she serves not necessarily the people we serve, but more of like the startups, the bigger companies, I to like you. find like what is that thread that goes across. Yeah your your products or your idea to get it to get people to buy in um or you know like for me it's like well if you want a three-word rebellion you pretty much have to come to me like i'm the only game in town building a story brand donald miller and his consultants they are the only game in town so we have really carved out this niche where if you're like ooh. I want a three word rebellion. You just can't go to anyone. Like if you're like, I want a magnetic message, you have hundreds of people to choose from, Right. <laughs> but a three word rebellion, it's just me. Like, I really love that. Um, I know my brain is like working overtime right now, thinking about what this would be. Um, just to kind of make a clarification for mm-hmm. everybody listening. So I, I call myself a content creation specialist and I, really focus on making content work for you, regardless of the kind of platform you want to be on. It's much more about like permission and accountability and the tools. I'm not a 
go deep expert. Like I am not going to be able to teach you every single nuance of how to use email marketing, right? Like there's people Mm -hmm. who are very specific about that, but I'm not that. And I don't want to be that. Mm -hmm. And there's something very freeing when I realize, because there's a moment, I think in all of our businesses where we're like, shit, there's so much competition out there. And can I have a successful business? And you're looking around and you're seeing everybody who's so brilliant. But when you step into your space, as Mm -hmm. you said, it kind of lets all of the other people who have their space just go away and be who they are. In fact, like if somebody wanted to learn specifically like email marketing or podcasting, like I'm not a, I'm not a specialist in yeah. that way, right? Yeah. And so to be able to refer somebody to another expert is very freeing for me. And those people are not experts at the things that I'm good at, right? Like teaching people how to be accountable and show up regularly, all of that crap. So I just feel like once you get this, mm-hmm. there must be a lot of freedom and relief on the other side and empowerment as you step into that and really just own it. Yeah, because it we have this tendency, especially in online business, I feel like it's like monkey see, monkey do, right? It's like, oh, well, this person's really successful. And we're given this message like, oh, well, then you should just follow their steps, do what yes. they do. I've heard the message of rob and duplicate, which is an academic. I'm always like, that is not cool. That's plagiarism. But, <laughs> but it's like... But if you do that, then you sound like them and you sound like everyone else. And then all of a sudden they're your competition versus, you know, like I look at my own spot in the messaging world and I really view other people more as my colleagues Mm -hmm. and I'm not right for everyone, Mm -hmm. right? Like someone else's methodologies might work better. So it is this very freeing thing. And I also think for people who are more generalists or who are more of those multi-passionates who are like bringing in a whole bunch of different ideas to like get their clients results. They have a lot of tools in their toolbox. Creating that overarching message about that result, that change can be really freeing because you can Mm -hmm. still be known for something and be more of that generalist or be more of that multi-passionate who has a ton of tools in their toolbox. That's such great permission you've just given like everybody on the, like there's a, there's a place for everybody to find their three word message, regardless of the type of entrepreneur that you are. So great. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. Well, it's not just information. It was really inspiration and motivation to get, to carve out your own place on the, uh, you know, the internet. It's, (laughs) it's vital at this point. Um, Can you Mm -hmm. tell us the ways we can get into your orbit? Yeah. So if you're interested in learning more about the three word rebellion, I've created a mini audio workshop that takes you through the process. And that's at threewordrebellion.com. The book is available everywhere. If you're like, nope, just give me the book. I want the book. (laughs) That's like Amazon, bookshop.org, wherever you buy your books. And then if you're just interested in connecting with me, the best place to do that is Instagram. I'm at Dr. Michelle Mazur. Nice. Thanks, Michelle. Um, the, the, um, the vitality in your message is, I, I, I just can't put enough importance on it. And I want to encourage people that if you have been struggling with marketing or content creation or any of this, or you go to a networking event and you feel like you trip over your words when you're talking about yourself, this is the place you need to start with Mm -hmm. your message clarity. So go to threewordrebellion.com, connect with Michelle on Instagram at Dr. Michelle Mazur, or buy her freaking book and just consume it, people. Is the book just called Three Word Rebellion? Like they're going to find it, right? They're just going to go. Oh yeah, they're just going to find it. Yes. Yeah, it's the best. (laughs) I love that. For you people who just want to take some information and go get that book. Michelle, thank you so much. I really appreciate your expertise and your time. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. pleasure. (laughs) I'll talk to everybody next week. Bye.